here's a segment from a recent Gun Talk radio episode. You can listen to all the Gun Talk radio podcasts however you tune in, or check out guntalk.com for more. When last we left this story, (laughs) out in New Mexico, the wacko governor was issuing orders to basically clamp down on and stomp out, get rid of the Second Amendment. It's, It's pretty crazy what's been going on. And things have been happening out there, lickety split left and right. Who better to join us to talk about that and some of the other stories that have been breaking all week long than Alan Gottlieb from the Second Amendment Foundation. Alan, how are you, sir? Doing great, Tom. Great to be with you and your listeners. It has been a busy week and actually a very rewarding week. I guess why don't we start with New Mexico because Second Amendment Foundation was very much involved in what was going on there, just a quick recap, uh, the governor, Michelle Luan Grisham, issued a an executive emergency health order blocking both concealed carry and open carry inside Albuquerque and inside that county. No, she had absolutely no legal authority to, to do that, did she? No, she didn't, and doing it under the guise of, of, of a health emergency. You know, I didn't know you could get COVID from a gun. <laughs> well, you know, if it helps them with their anti-gun agenda, they'll try anything. They will definitely try anything. And, of course, she got slapped down. The Second Amendment Foundation and others filed lawsuits, uh, and the court gave us a temporary restraining order against her enforcement of it until they could have a hearing to rule on a, uh, an a term permanent injunction on it. And uh, then she went and she amended it. So she knows she's in trouble. And she knows she's in trouble because basically the Democrat attorney general of the state wouldn't enforce the law, nor would any of the sheriffs enforce the law. Uh, And it wasn't going to go anywhere. And so she decided that she'll limit it just to parks and, quote unquote, uh, certain other areas um, where children may be present rather than, quote-unquote, the, the whole ban on carry, uh, open or concealed. Uh, and, of course, that's not going to stand up either because, quite frankly, the Supreme Court's already ruled pretty much on, on that issue, so uh, pretty much really head-on. So we're going to have another victory, and she's becoming the gift that keeps on giving because she's actually split the Democratic Party. I mean, an, an anti-gun activist like David Hogg, for example, you know, uh, with, the, with the Parkland kids who uh, are running all kinds of anti-gun groups, uh, he basically has come out and, and said it's unconstitutional. So as legislators, uh, Democratic legislators in various other states, so she's got herself in, in a bind right now and doesn't know how to get out of it. And we'll help her out with our lawsuit. It's so weird. It's almost like you're thinking, okay, how incompetent can you be as a politician? Because you have control of the legislature. You have control. I mean, you have a Democrat attorney general. You could have made, oh, I don't know, 30 minutes worth of phone calls and lined everybody up on this. But no, you just go out there and issue this emergency order. And your attorney general, a very leftist attorney general, says, I'm not going to enforce that. The police chief says, I'm not going to enforce that. The sheriff says, I'm not going to enforce that. And then you have the anti-gun movement comes back and says, oh, no, no, that's unconstitutional. That's too far. And I'm just thinking, who were her advisors? Or did she even have any advisors on this? Well, I actually think she did, Tom. The state anti-gun rights group that's their affiliate, I think they're an affiliate of of Bloomberg groups, Ah. they supported it. And they came out. They, they helped push her in that direction. I'm pretty convinced, and uh-huh. and they made public comments in support of it. So you've got the extreme gun prohibition lobby behind her, but it isn't going to sell. And a lot of people in the anti-gun movement know, in fact, they're going to get smacked in court, and that, and they're going to get a bad, you know, loss. And so they're trying to distance themselves from her a bit because she's going to make great case law for us. Wow. All right. So this deal where she says, okay, we're just going to name some places where you can't. Carry that seems to be a theme that's going on in a number of states, the so-called sensitive places. And that was a, a thing that was mentioned in the Bruin decision, but now it has been bastardized and taken up by the gun ban lobby. And now they're saying, well, you know what, we'll just name practically everything a sensitive place and there'll be gun bans. And that leads us to one of the actions from the Second Amendment Foundation this week. California's doing the same thing. Yeah, we have a number of suits filed across the country in various uh, jurisdictions, states, and jurisdictions, 
uh, you know, uh, in the court system, uh, challenging these so-called bans on, on firearms in sensitive places. You know, I actually expected, and I've said this before, that after the Bruin decision, the anti-gunners in the heavy blue states, Democratic-controlled blue states, would come up with something that was slightly less restrictive than what the Supreme Court struck down, trying to be as anti-gun as they could, that they could get away with it. But instead, they didn't do that. They doubled down, and they went further than what was struck down. And so we have a bunch of cases in court that we're going to win on eventually, uh, you know, going through the court system, knocking down these so-called bans on sensitive places. Like, you know, in New Jersey, a sensitive place is you're having a gun in your own car. I mean, it really gets a little ridiculous. <laughs> well, and there are – if you take if you take a map of a lot of these cities, if you basically kind of color around all the so-called sensitive places – you literally could not go through a city. You couldn't even drive through a city without going through some of these areas. It is, it is. I guess that's the whole plan. It is a ban on carry. Yeah, it is. And we'll be discussing all this and all these cases at the Gun Rights Policy Conference coming up this weekend in, in Phoenix, Arizona, uh, September 22nd through 24th. Uh, we have a lot, all the attorneys that basically they're, they're filing all these cases all across the country, particularly on the sensitive places stuff. But we'll also be dealing with you know um, all other kinds of bans on carry, bans on 18 to 20 year olds buying, you know, using or carrying firearms, magazine bans, so called so called assault weapon bans, um, all types of you know bans on advertising of firearms, and, you know, so that that you know in 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 places where they're infringing on First Amendment rights. We got a whole slew of litigation we'll be talking about that I think is going to make an awful lot of gun owners proud to see how we've responded to these anti-gun threats. So the Gun Rights Policy Conference actually kicks off this coming Friday, uh, and then, of course, it's all day Saturday and Sunday, but there'll be a reception Friday night. This will be in Phoenix. Now, here's the question. Can people still get in? Yeah, there are some slots available at saf.org. You can go and register uh, saf.org, and also we'll be live streaming it on both YouTube and on Facebook, uh, and plus a few other places as well. So pay attention going to the SAF website as the week, week progresses and to get information if you can't attend in person, uh, you know, so that you can live stream it. All right, and of course I'll be there. Uh, going to be emceeing the lunch, but also Ryan, my son, and I are going to be doing a talk. Basically, and I don't know if you've even heard, we've decided on a name for this thing finally, and I call it Selling the Second Amendment, which is basically how to present your arguments well and be persuasive when you're talking about it. And that's going to be really important for the group of, uh, you know, 500, 600 activists that are going to be at the Gun Rights Policy Conference. Great topic, Tom. Great title. Thank you. I'll see you soon. Oh, you bet. And, of course, the Gun Rights Policy Conference, I guess we should mention – we may have left out one of the most important parts. This thing is completely free. You sign up for it. You show up. You get to hear all of this. You get to mingle with all of the gun rights activists and some of the people who are the very leaders, the people who are really working on this, and pick their brains, and then come away with a lot of printed material, and it's all free. Yeah, this year we're giving away about a dozen free books for a Second Amendment library as well. Each person gets a dozen books? Yeah, about a dozen books. It might be more. I'm not sure. Holy cow. It is terrific. It, it's just fun to go. You go and you recharge your batteries. Still got time to book tickets down there to get your airline tickets, or if you're in the area where you could drive in, it's not that far. You could drive from a lot of places to Phoenix. Check it out, saf.org. Alan, quickly, uh, what else are you working on, or what are the wins we've made in the last uh, week or two? Wow, there's so much going on, it's hard for me to even remember. But we took a win in California on their ban on advertising. Uh, ah. So that if, if, you, if you place the ad, if anybody in the gun industry placed an ad that might entice or interest a, a, a minor about firearms, even if it's about gun safety, uh, uh, you, you could you'd be fined in, in prison, so to speak. Uh, and so we, we, we challenged that, and we got a 3-0 appeals court ruling in our favor, uh, on that, that that's a pretty pretty monumental one in California, it is. It's in the a Ninth big Circuit. One. So we're kind of, we're kind of excited about that, and we have filed. Uh, and of course, we got the temporary restraining order against New Mexico as well. Uh, right. and, and and you know, and and there's a bunch of moving. We filed lots of motions in a lot of different cases uh, that are, that are climbing up the ladder this past week, and so really kind of excited. And of course, one of the one of our big things we got going on is co we call it capture the flag. Uh, but it's going after the so-called red flag laws that deny you due process. 
And there are mm. particular six, six states, Tom, that have a standard of, uh, of issuing those that are so out, unconstitutional it isn't funny. And so we filed suit against one of those in Maryland to start with, and we're looking for more plaintiffs in the other states to file it as well to unravel these so-called red flag laws. Excellent, excellent. Well, we'll get this and a whole lot more, a lot of information that will be presented and updates on this at the Gun Rights Policy Conference. Alan, I will see you just a few days in Phoenix. I really look forward to it, Tom. It's been too long. Thank you. I know it. We'll see you there. You take care, my friend. All right, 866-TALK-GUN. Would you like to go to GRPC? H- have you ever been? Are you one of those people who has been once and go, wow, what you gone? You, I'd like to go again. You could give your range report on what it's like to go to GRPC. Give me a call, 866-TALK-GUN. 